but you, you would have to assume, you would have to assume that the Prophet Muhammad him, would have known what was right, taken it, and then t- threw away what was wrong. I no, mean, that, that's a no, big assumption. You're, no, you're playing the supernatural here. What I would, what I would <laughs> say, what I would say is that Muhammad was a man of his time, that he was consulting with scholars at the time, that these were ideas that were current and common. But there's no empirical or historical, historical evidence, evidence for, that. for that. There isn't. But it's just an assumption. But it's that's a, faith. It's, it's a, no, <laughs> I have it's, faith it's, that the Prophet Muhammad borrowed things from scholars. Yes. That's faith. Isn't that a no, that's, that's faith, ladies and gentlemen. That is a reasonable <laughs> assumption. No, how the, al- the alternative is to assume. But the history is counter to that. The history is counter to that. Do you see? <laughs> you're, you're saying that Muhammad was some kind of extremist living in a cave for, for all of his life? No, what I'm not saying at all. Was, even if your assumption was true, it would still be incorrect because the scholars of science at the time had no idea. They had absolutely no idea what was going on with the science. They thought the mountains were keeping the and that's not true either. Exactly. But this is why no, no, that's not true what you're saying about the scholars of the time. No, it, well, in Arabia, definitely that was the case. No, and, and in fact, there were no scholars in Arabia. In his city, there, there were only 17 people who could read and write. Forget the sciences and, and uh, the complicated uh, knowledge of scriptures. There, there were only 17 people in his entire tribe who could read I'm, and write. I'm, I'm just kind of surprised that your argument rests on the fact that, that, that you're arguing that the that Arabs were ignorant nomads who knew nothing at all. Yes, that's, this, this is exact. This is this is what we say. Yes, <laughs> there, there were pe- there were people who were so as many Europeans at that time. As yes, well. I, mean, but I, people, I think the evidence, the historical evidence, shows that there is much more trade and communication going on than you are giving people credit. Well, you can be ignorant and do trade. I mean, we have yes. people doing trade today who are ignorant. And look at the bankers today, man. What they've done to us. And that <laughs> trade, kept all our money. And with trade comes <laughs> information. Like I say. When we look at the descriptions of embryology in the Quran, and we look at the descriptions of embryology in Aristotle, sure. they are the same. Well, in what way, sir? Would you like to give us the, 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 the discussion of the development of bones, etc., all these things, that, you know, the fairly crude uh, stages that are described in Aristotle, it, it's obvious. You, you may have a point there. I, I'm willing to accept that. What I'm saying is, I'm willing to accept that there may be similarities, not that Quran borrowed from Aristotle. Uh, my contention is that the, the specific stages described in the Quran, how does that uh, 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 match with what Aristotle said? I mean, those stages are quite peculiar to the Quran. Quran is quite unique in describing those stages because the, stages the bones are formed the first, and then the muscles, and this is uh, how would a desert nomad know okay, that? Right now, I'm 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 laughing at this idea that this is a specific a specific description of embryology. Yes, bones develop first, then muscles develop. I agree, it's general. No, no, I agree what with you, it's general. I, uh, this this, is, this is something that you can infer just by you know <laughs> rational thought about embryology. You can also just determine this by looking at fetuses from different animals. You can look by at desecration. Yes. Why, 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 don't, why don't we get something more specific when it talks about geology, right? And how could it fathom, how could anyone illiterate with the science was counter to that time, right? How can this you is, this see is something counter to say to say that bone that, that the mountains, mountains have roots yeah. is is and they have a function that we understand that is, is in line with isostasy according to Georgia today that to me is quite phenomenal but Do once again you've done it you've equated these really crude primitive guesses that you find in the Quran with the specific details of science okay let me You're tell you why they're not crude the reason not crude is that the Quranic science and this would be good for everyone to have something is that we have a, the, the, the Quran is one, uh, probably the only religious book that tells you, gives you the tools to interpret it, right? So what the Quran says is you take general principles in the Quran, general values, or general statements, and you refer them to specific ones related to the same topic. So in, 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 in normal literature, linguistics is called inter and intertextuality, okay? So when we take general statements, we can make them specific with the Arabic language used in the Quran itself. So it's not crude from that perspective. And we have a scope of interpretation. So if you, the classical Arabic dictionaries were preserved and you have a scope of meaning. So when we have the scope of meaning, we know that these things are quite specific. Significantly, even when the Quran says that the universe is expanding, for, for example, there's the word here, expanding, which actually means it expanding in the past or expanding in the future. There is a scope of interpretation, you see. So the interesting here is we should maybe... No, it's not interesting. 
It's not. It's, it, you're real. You're really boring. <laughs> this this is the same. Th That's the, is, that, is that an atheist cop out? Maybe. No, no. This is this is the same story we get from Jewish scholars, from Christian scholars. They do exactly the same thing. Well, I'm not Jewish or Christian. I'm and Muslim. No, it's, we're talking about specific standard, issues. It's standard religious analysis. Yeah, but Professor Myers, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you think it would be highly arrogant of me if I said to you, what you're saying is typical atheists, what they say, they change the subject, they go to history, and they, they say that you're the same as the Jews, you're the same as the Christians, and throw so all these outdated cliches. Would you appreciate me doing that? Go ahead. But I wouldn't. Do you know why? Do you know why I wouldn't do that? Because I really want to no, engage you're with you. Defending your own I, car. I really want to engage with you. That's why. But no, no, you do not. Of you, I do. You want to parrot dogma at me and have me no, accepted. No, I'm actually accepting a lot of your assumptions and premises. I don't have a problem. With that. Well, you did also try to assert and project faith onto him. Yes. And well, we he, are not. He said it was an assumption. That's why. Okay, and you can make an assumption based on evidence. Faith is an assertion no based on no evidence. No, well, we've been talking about oh, evidence. No, I do have evidence. Okay, That's no. what I'm telling you. That when, for instance, when yeah. we look at Aristotle's words, when we look at, at the description of the Quran, we see a correspondence. Well, do you, you haven't shown us any correspondence. Yeah, that's the point. That's a statement. You haven't shown us. This is a statement. Aristotle is like the Quran. How? How? Aristotle, Aristotle, Einstein, Aristotle <laughs> also describes the emergence of bones and muscle right. in sequence. Right. Okay. And it's like the Quran. And it's like the Quran, which but is does, it, does Aristotle say the bones come first and then the flesh and the muscles? Does he say that? Are you sure? Anybody that works I'll, with I'll, I'll, I'll let you think about this. Well, anyone uh, that works you, with are, livestock are you, would be able to that, figure I'm, that I'm out. Not, I'm not saying Wait, it. Can, can you tell is, sure? is that what the Quran specifically says? Absolutely. This is exactly what the Quran says. Chapter, then chapter we're done three. because you just demonstrated the Quran is wrong. Yeah, but how? That's, how that's, how, that's, what hap that's not what happens in the Well, world. this is what the embryologists are telling us. The this is exactly no, what the not. embryologists are telling us. No, they're not. I mean, okay. <laughs> let, let me tell you what Keith Moore said. I mean, you can disagree with him. He doesn't like Keith Moore. Uh, I, I don't know why, why you don't. Like. What he said on the page number 364A of his book, The Human Embryo, that in the seventh week the bones are formed, and immediately after that the flesh is formed, and the flesh, the, the bones are nonsense. closed. Well, Keith Moore is wrong. He's an embryologist. This is this is his field. It's my field too. I okay, know it's wrong. you're, you're an embryologist. That, that, yes. Yeah. Oh, great! Wow, <laughs> wow, that's news to me. Okay, so that's uh, that, that's wrong because what happens first is you have you have differentiation of mesoderm. Right. That within the mesoderm you have segregation into things like embryonic mesenchyme, and then you have these cartilaginous centers where you form bone. Right. And these are forming simultaneously with each other. Right. Simultaneously. So, so yes. even when, if that's the case, the Quran is right. Wait, because wait, wait. Thumma, yeah. Thumma is very, 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 even if that's the case, even if that's the case, linguistically the Quran is right. Thumma literally can in Arabic language means is, uh, things happening simultaneously. simultaneously. Yes. Well. Okay. yes. But that's precisely what I have a question for you. See, Professor Myers, I think what's interesting, even if you're right, that means we would have to assume that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and peace upon him, actually used to go and look into biology. He was a biologist. He would actually no. go and investigate no, 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 things about He was an objects. astronomer? He must have had a library of an Alexandrian magnitude. So even when you make these assumptions, it's still problematic. He was a Wait, geologist? No, this, this, no, because this is what I've been telling you. Sure. There are no embryological details of any consequence in the Quran. Well, the, the, and worse this than is, that. This is not the, stuff. The, de the details are not there. You're right. You're right. De this the details are not there. This is not stuff that requires a huge library to figure out. This requires a passing acquaintance with general knowledge about the primitive state of biology at the time. That's a fair We're point. Are you willing to accept now that Muhammad possibly had general knowledge about astronomy, uh, hieroglyph, hieroglyphics? He had knowledge of, uh, for example, uh, geology. Yep. He's talking about isostasis, something about isostasis. Okay, so he must have been going around studying with some scholars in Arabia. He must. He was. He wasn't a shepherd. He was a very literate man. The he intellectual. Was, he was time. teaching in a university. <laughs> he was an intellect. And all those people who believed it at the time, they were must. There must have been blind bunch of bigots and, and they just followed him just, just for the sake of it, just to have a drink? No, I've been yeah. saying quite the opposite. I'm saying okay. that he's a man of his times, that he was part of a culture, right. that, that the Arabs of that time were not quite as primitive and dogmatic and ignorant as, you're, as you seem Well, to I d it depends what books you're reading, sir, yeah. because Maybe this is my... I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying they have I, I'm a historian <laughs> from the University of London, and I, I refer you to the books of Irfan Shahid, who's an authority in this field, uh, pre-Islamic Arabia, and he states that Arab, Arabs at the time were a primitive society, yes. and now you're saying yes. 
Well, no, I agree. They, they were. Well, that, they, I, were they, they were primitive in the sense that they were that's, not, that's exactly what I'm saying. There was no Arabic language you, written down at the time. On the one hand, you are complaining that there, there's this detailed, wonderful science sure. in the Quran yes. that he could only have learned from yes. you know, Revelation. Sure. And I'm saying that no, that what you find in the Quran is an extremely primitive science. Right. There was nothing more than a common man could have learned right. from you know, general interactions with, with learned society at the time. Like mountain roots as well? How would they even know that? It was not even knowledge at that time. Mountain roots. Again, it's a, it's the old saying is that you've got this mountain that's going up here, and there's a lot of depth beneath it. And then they would understand the function of that as well. Yeah, yeah, function, not, not the, the function, the function, it, it, it is, it is, it is. Yes, the, the function of the Quran it is, is to, to anchor the crust and things like, that. and that's not the case. That's again wrong. It's geology. not to anchor the crust at all. What is it for? It's actually to, from my knowledge, it's actually to, you know, like Archimedes function point. Like that's what isostasis comes from. It's like another term to discuss the Archimedes fulcrum point and that's what it's there for. Anymore. I think the really sad there. thing here is you're missing the enormous picture to focus on the pixel. Yes. Right. Okay. The enormous picture is that you have something that only communicates with the least credible possible proponent. And he wants you to believe impossible nonsense for no reason. And only if you believe impossible nonsense for no reason will you be saved. And you will get unimaginable rewards if you believe whatever the priests are selling and you will f suffer a fate worse than death if you don't buy into their nonsense. That's not true. That's quite a sexy way of looking at it, I think. <laughs> a sexy way to look at it? <laughs> I mean, well, There's a language barrier here. <laughs> You're all about the sexy way of looking at it. You, 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 you sexed it up slightly, right? Because I, actually what I've just discussed with Professor, right? Yes, yeah, but Professor Myers. What I just with Professor Myers was like actually the Quran is quite opposite to that. It's not a text that says believe just because I say so. Okay, then it actually tells what? you to, for example, afala taqinun in Arabic. It says, do you not use your mind, your intellect? So then let me it's clarify. It's telling you and trying to evoke thinking. Do you see? I just want to make sure we don't have a language barrier. So when I said that you are punished for not believing, you are saying that you're saying that I'm wrong. That in your religion you are not punished simply for not believing. Uh, it, no, you're right, but it's bigger than that. It's an existential question. It's bigger question. than that, so I was right. No. Okay, well, what else am I wrong about? Well, if, well, I think the way we connect with each other is not by having yes or no answers, but having a conversation, right? So Are you... It's an existential question, for example. See, Hold on just a second. I want you to think for a moment about the creator of the entire universe. Yeah. Doesn't give a rat's ass whether you do anything good or bad in your life. All that matters, the sole criteria, is that you are gullible enough to follow the story of the least credible illiterate proponent you can follow. That's the sole criteria, and that's all. No, that's not true. Okay, There's if that's things. not it, then, then an unbeliever could be saved. An unbeliever would not go to hell. Yeah, that's true. If all unbelievers go to hell, then the sole criteria is gullibility. Let me give an example. Uh, first and foremost, what we say is that the Quran says we do not punish anyone until they have given the message. And there is another concept in the Quran called Delil Burhan, which means conclusive evidence, evidence that you require as to be conclusive. Now, now, now the second thing is the second because the message is good for you. That's why. But but why have you seen that in history? So no, and that, that, now I can't. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you just damned us all to hell. No, 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 why would you have? Let's have not, not get stampeded. This is just one at a time. No stampedes. Okay. The other point is, is an existential question because we believe in Islam of this. Uh, philosophical principle called the fitra. Fitra means the innate disposition. And we believe that human beings have been created with the innate disposition to acknowledge oneness. Okay? It's okay. a spiritual concept, the oneness of God. And what we say is when we deny ourselves, that's why the question who you are is an existential question in the Quran. Saying, who are you? Are you just a product of American society? Are you a product of capitalism? Are you a product of communism? Are you a product of the system? Are you a product of your parents? If you are, then who are you? You're just like uh, a social a biological robot that someone types in the code and you just act in accordance. And the Quran says, don't do that. Think about your reality. And it says, you know, are you just going to follow your forefathers? And it says, literally, even if they were based on no knowledge, so it's an existential question. And from that we say, if you don't know who you are, then you're just rejecting yourself. And God says in the Quran that to, to, to deny God or to re reject God from that innate disposition perspective is like denying your own self. Okay. So the point I'm trying to say is it is an ex existential question. It's, and that's why it's useful to always have these kind of good discussions all the time.